some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. You know, every once in a while, I try to do something that's not exactly a frauditor video, something humorous, something that uh, is a bit off the wall, of course. I mean, there's only so much of these jackasses that you can take. I mean, there's only so much I can take of them. They call themselves auditors. They call themselves journalists. They call themselves this, that, and the other. They say it's their First Amendment right. And they say this, that, the other. You know it's all a bunch of BS to begin with. They also say they want to hold people accountable. No, they don't want to hold people accountable. They just want to uh, act like a bunch of jackasses commit crimes in front of the camera, and uh, get away with it. But of course, uh, inevitably, in dealing with these idiots over here, you tend to forget that there are actual journalists and actual auditors out there who do hold people accountable, who actually disseminate information. In fact, I was sitting here uh, just browsing through... Uh, my YouTube feed and ended up finding this story right here. And, uh, well, let's compare what they do to what the frauditors claim is journalism and examine the differences between what the two uh, standpoints are. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. A call 11 for action tonight. Two Toledoans need help getting reimbursed for damage to their cars after they say they bought some bad gas. Melissa Andrews is here with the story. Mel, they have proof. This is the proof, a mixture provided by a mechanic who drained water from one of their cars. This is the gas. This the water. Both customers say they got the mix at a station in South Toledo and then their cars stopped working. Okay, the uh, story that starts off with an actual problem going on at this uh, gas station, which apparently was some bad gas being sold to customers. In fact, the journalist has a bottle of that bad gas in her hand, which is called proof. That's something that uh, frauditors never have when they come in to a uh, establishment. They uh, will sometimes say that, oh, we've got massive amount of emails saying that there's a lot of corruption here. Well, never have I seen a frauditor actually produce any of those emails. They say they have them, but from what I've seen, they never show them. Now, they do tend to show uh, court documents and everything like that that they claim back up their case, but that's all they ever do. They never show any tangible evidence. They don't show anything like what this uh, reporter right here is showing. I've been over here 10 years and I've never went to that gas station. Willie Coleman was running late to work one day in February, so he did something he had never done. And I decided to stop by there to get some gas. Okay, what we got here is the perfect example of uh, actual journalism. Uh, we have an individual here who has the problem with the gas station. He is actually being interviewed by the uh, journalists. He is presenting his case to everybody, and it is being disseminated to the public. Now let's compare this to a uh, recent issue with a so-called journalist by the name of Zach who pushed somebody's buttons until this happened. I hear recording kids. Okay. Bullshit! Bullshit! Yeah, Zachy boy, uh, that's a bunch of bullshit right there. I had to blur out so many children in this video, which makes me wonder, what was your real purpose for going here? Was it for you to get off? I mean, no, that couldn't be it. I mean, we don't want to go that far, but given your now expunged criminal history, yeah, we might not know what you really are behind the scenes. But you going along, walking around with these kids, and your camera not going down when these kids around. You don't. You don't, you don't think it's odd to tell a grown man what to do? You don't think it's odd to even be asking that question? 
Uh, grown men get told what to do all the time by their wives, by their bosses, by the military if they're in it. I mean, it happens every single day. So it's not exactly an oddity, dude. That's just you being sexist at this point. I'm by somebody here. <laughs> what did you say? You said you were going to punch me? That's what you said. Don't touch me. I don't call that journalism. I call that harassment. But let's carry on and show further examples of the vast differences between the two. At this gas station at 905 South Avenue. And I've been noticing the bags on the tanks. He's got eight tanks there. The tanks one and two always have a plastic bag over them. So common sense to tell me something's wrong with them tanks. But on this day, Willie says the bags were gone and he needed to fill up quickly. So I figured they was working. So when I pulled up there, I gave her the $40. I put, I said, here's 40, well, I'm gonna put $40 in here because I'm running late. She said, okay. I, she cut the pump on, I pumped the gas. I got on um, Anthony Wayne Trail and the car started acting up. So when I got home, the car quit running. Again, a great example of what journalism actually is. Going in and actually talking to people, interviewing those that uh, know what the story is all about, getting the information, and making sure that uh, people end up being held accountable for the mistakes that happen. As we shall see later on in this video, that they attempt to hold people accountable anyway. What do frauditors do? What do frauditors do? Well, they don't exactly interview anybody. In fact, they'll sit in a lobby for hours on end, antagonizing everybody around them, just like Looney Lana does in this particular clip right here, where all Lana does is just uh, say, well, it's not my fault they're uh, not giving you any service. I'm only here with the camera. I mean, it doesn't matter that I'm stealing your information. You should be more mad at them. Again, as you can see, a vast difference in the uh, professionalism between frauditors and actual journalists. Willie immediately got the car to his mechanic, who had a surprise for him. He brought me this bottle with the gasoline. The gasoline's up top here. The rest of that's water. He said, your engine's messed up. He said, we're going to have to flush the engine redo the whole engine and drop, drop all the gas out. The bill, $1,425.53. Willie went back to the gas station to try to talk to the owner. A manager told him those pumps were supposed to be out of service. On another visit, Willie found the employee who was working when he bought the gas. Again, a shining example of what true journalism is. The uh, journalist continues to build the story, showing what this issue cost uh, Willie right here. And it was not exactly cheap. I mean, most of us would not be able to afford a $1,000 uh, bill of repair on their car. I mean, this is the kind of thing that is journalism right here. Finding and reporting the actual issues that are going on, not creating a stir like Zacky Boy or Looney Lana or any of those others that like to do that. I mean, that is not journalism. This is journalism reporting on the pain of this particular customer right here that's journalism going up into that uh that uh wick center uh, uh zacky boy that's not journalism that's just uh being a douchebag i said i talked to your boss and he told me that you wasn't supposed to cut that pump on she said well nobody never told me that and she said she said, hold on a minute, let me call this mother and let him know nobody told me about that pump. And she said, well, evidently somebody took the bags off. Call 11 for Action obtained reports from the Lucas County Auditor's Weights and Measures Department and the State Fire Marshal's Office, which oversees the weight and content of underground tank systems. Oh, wait, wait a minute now. 
there are actual auditors who go out and uh, make sure that gas pumps are okay. And it's called the Weights and Measure Department. And like I said, they have auditors who measure these things. In other words, people who actually know how to uh, do this kind of thing. Oh, my goodness. Say it isn't so. People that actually know how to hold other companies accountable, not just say, oh, I'm going to hold you accountable. No, this is the real deal. Not that uh, rather rather uh, devious tactic of having your followers call flood uh, places and making sure that their uh, phone lines are out of order to just in case, like in the case of a fire department, that they don't receive any calls and people end up getting hurt or worse because of issues like that. I mean, that's just freaking ridiculously stupid right there. An inspection by the fire marshal's office on March 5th shows the station was out of compliance and received 10 violations, including five for failure to perform periodic or annual tests of detectors and equipment that would have detected water in the storage tanks. During the same visit, an inspector discovered five to six inches of water in the premium tank. We were also provided reports of additional customer complaints of water in gas as well as weight testing by the county. A visit by the auditor's office for another complaint of bad fuel in August shows four items which were to be corrected before reinspection. In this one, dated February 19th, a customer stated he filled up two cars and both quit working the same day. Another report dated on March 11th states a customer put in half a tank of gas and her car stalled. Again, this is what real journalism is all about. They started off small in the story with one customer who had a complaint, and they did some actual investigations and presented documents that's called citations, that they were showing their citations, they were showing their work. That's something that frauditors don't ever do. They were showing their work, and they showed that there, this was an ongoing pattern with this particular gas station that uh, there were problems and that they needed to be corrected. This is what journalism is all about. Finding issues and disseminating the information to the public and in hopes of there being a solution to the problem in this particular scenario. And with frauditors, what do we get? You don't... You don't, you don't think it's odd to tell a grown man what to do? Antagonism, baiting, whatever you want to call it. Zacky boy here is a perfect example of what a uh, journalist is not. And that goes for his friends too. All of them. Every single one of them. They found that I bought 12 gallons worth of water at that gas station. Sherilyn Mickles is the customer who filed that complaint with the county after she filled up on March 3rd. After I filled up, we didn't even get a half mile down the road. We stalled on the high level and we had to get a tow. Her mechanic also provided her this bottle of liquid he pulled out of her engine. And this was the bad gas. So this is gas, this is water. Correct. The mechanic told me to bring something to put the bad gas in. Her bill? $3,200. I want all my total damages done for my car when I go to court and forth and them to be held reliable. That was a very dangerous situation. According to this report, the county again visited the gas station on May 2nd when re reported the issues. Upon this inspection, the county found 2.8 inches of water in the underground tank. The station owner stated that the tank isn't being used and the fire marshal's office was notified. The fire marshal's office says it conducts inspections to ensure underground systems function properly, but not to regulate water in gas or gas quality. And there are no state laws on fuel quality standards, so this is considered a private matter. Ohio is just one of three states that does not test for fuel quality. State lawmakers have tried to pass a fuel testing law, but those efforts stalled. Both Willie and Sherilyn have filed civil suits against the owner of the gas station. We've been in contact with the owner and his attorney who previously said they'd work toward a solution, but have quit communicating with us. For Call 11 for Action, I'm Melissa Anderson. And ladies and gentlemen, that is journalism. 
That is holding people accountable, or at least attempting to hold people accountable. The right people, investigations being done, disseminating information to the public that uh, doesn't hurt the average person, but tries to help them. Predators pose as journalists saying that they're gathering content for a story. Well, uh, when you got this kind of content out there that real journalists find all the time, what is their excuse for not presenting any kind of story other than going out and antagonizing everybody in sight? And of course, the answer to that is they're not journalists. They were never journalists to begin with. They don't know how to uh, be journalists. They don't have the professional conduct to be uh, a true journalist or anything of that nature. When one can accidentally uh, find this kind of a news story on YouTube, then you know that these guys are not exactly legitimate. This is an actual news story. This is the kind of thing that people would like to know about. Bad gas in this particular scenario. And actually presenting evidence for the story. On the flip side, going into a government office, acting like a complete jackass, and uh, antagonizing everybody in sight, is that really journalism? No, it's not. That would be disorderly conduct. And a lot of frauditors do get charged with that. So, at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And I will see you on the next one. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?